a bit of boop boop. What's going on, guys? Uh, Be wise guy here, um, and I'm coming to you with the first actual tutorial for QT and the second video in the QT tutorial series. Anyway, so go ahead and make a new project, and we're going to be making a QT widget application. Um, and I'm going to be storing this in here because it doesn't matter. And of course, if you read the title of this video, this is all about Q timers. So, without further ado, and without Windows being Windows, we're going to go and hit next. And I'm using QT521. QT53 is also perfectly okay. Nothing changes in QT53 as far as I'm aware for timers. And especially for our purpose, it absolutely makes no difference. So, go ahead and we're going to make a Q widget for this. Um, however, it doesn't really matter that much. You could use any kind of... Uh, Q dialog and Q window or whatever you want to do. Uh, anyway, so here we go. So we're going to make a few uh, little things um, on our form just to make this a little bit more interesting. Uh, so we're going to make a button. Uh, we're actually going to make two buttons. Uh, one, we're going to call this one start. And we're going to call this one stop. Just like that. Okay, no worries. And we're also going to get a um a label okay so um i haven't showed you guys layouts but i'll just show you guys really quickly layouts um so to make a layout in the qt designer mode um right click on the form and go to layout and then go into layout in a grid for these tutorials we're going to be laying out everything in a grid i like a grid grid's nice um and grids are easy to work with and um grids make people smile Remember that one. If, if your lecturer or anyone ever asks you what do grids do, you say, dude, they make people smile. Alright, so um, go ahead and clear the text out of here like that. And um, we're just going to set up some stuff in here really quickly for visual purposes. Um, on the horizontal, we're going to be H-Center. And um, on the vertical, we're going to also be H-Center. And in here, we're going to um, we're gonna go into, 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 into into style sheet and we're going to be and don't worry we'll get into this all uh, in a future video but just follow along for now this is just so we can just see what's going on so we're just going to go color and we're going to go red and okay and then we're going to go and look for font 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 here we go and we're going to make this like size 20 and we're going to make this bold and we're going to call this one counting label label error no, let's keep this label. Okay. So, now what we need to do is we need to make a few objects. So, head over to our uh, widget.cpp and then go to our widget.h because we need to go here. And add the include uh, queue timer. So, I don't know what it's doing. There we go. Include queue timer. Just like that. And we're going to make a new queue timer, so we're going to make it a private member of this class, and I don't know why my keyboard just did that, but anyway. Uh, so a new, so queue timer, uh, pointer to a new queue timer, and we're going to call this one my timer equals new queue, whoops, queue timer. Great if I could type, it's just, I don't know what's wrong with me today. New queue timer, this. Okay, there we go, pretty easy. So. That's pretty much it. We've created a thing. Now, what we need to do is we actually need to create... Um, we need to connect with that. Boom. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. We need to create a um, private slot. So this is for the meta object compiler. And we're going to create... We're going to call this one void. Um, the return type is void on slots, generally speaking. Uh, and we will give this a name of run on tick and no parameters that's okay all right and we're going to refract this uh into the you know, sorry we're going to add the definition to widget.cpp and we will write the information in implementation in just a moment so we're going to connect we're going to connect the timer so um so we're going to type the keyword connect now if you're wondering where connect comes from uh connect is part of the language extension for uh qt for the qt framework so it's a language extension for c plus plus um, I'm pretty sure it has one for Python. In fact, I'm 99.99 billion percent sure there is one. Um, but I only work in C++ uh, for, for, um, for QT. I do a lot of TK into stuff. 
Um, I think that's how you say it. It's TK Inter. Someone tell me how you say TK Inter. Um, but anyway. Um, so, if you read the parameter list here, um, it takes a sender. So, a sender object, which is a um, function pointer object. So, the uh, sender is our queue timer. So, we can call this one my timer, I think. Yeah. Um, the signal is timeout. The context is this. The slot is uh, run on tick, just like that. And then we need one more, and we're going to close it off just like that. Okay, cool. So um, we're going to do a few things first um, before we can really get into the uh, fun part. Uh, first thing is to right-click on your button and click go to slot and double-click on clicked. Go back to the form, right-click on here, and go to go to slot and double-click on clicked. All right, so we have um, we have two more um, slots. We have two more slots that have been generated by Qt Creator for us. We'll get into those and how they work uh, in uh, future videos. I say that a lot, but we will. We will get into all this stuff. So just stick around, guys. But for now, this is just about Q timers. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, say my timer uh, start and. We'll set it to a thousand milliseconds, so one second, and then we will just say my timer, timer, uh, whoops, dot stop. So one starts it at a thousand milliseconds, um, at a thousand millisecond intervals, and one stops it just from running. So all we need to do is. Um, first, actually, what we'll do is we'll compile and run this to make sure that this all runs nice and dandy. Um, and you guys can just see here the compile output just right here. So, um, so you'll notice also, actually, um, before I go ahead, um, I just noticed since this in the compile output, but I'm so used to doing this now. Uh, this shouldn't be an issue for you guys because you guys should be using GCC 4.8 point whatever, something above 7. Um, but in case you're not, I have done an in-header initialization, um, which is only available in C++11, in fact, GNU++11. I'm not sure um, if it's part of the standard. I'm not 99% sure. However, my main compiler is GCC, so um, I could be wrong, but I know it works in Clang. I know it works in GCC. I'm fairly sure it works in MSVC++, but hell, that thing has gone to shit a long time ago, so... Anyone still using that? Buy a new compiler, find a new compiler, make a new compiler, whatever, just stop using it, really. Um, but anyway, so that runs fine. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to route our implementation into here. So, um, what's the best way that we can do this? We'll make a member, we'll make a member in here. Um, we'll make a new integer member and we'll make it private and we'll make it int um, the number and we'll initialize it to zero. So we don't get undefined behavior, uh, since an uninitialized member is an un is, has undefined behavior. Um, and all we're going to do is we're going to say, um, what did I call? Sorry, sometimes some things slip my memory. So we're going to say the number, the number plus equals one. Uh, I could have said plus plus, but um, just for verbosity, plus equals one is fine as well. And then we're going to say UI dot um, counting label dot set text Q string number and we're going to say the number. So um, if you're wondering why I did um, why, I, why I've done this like this, oh, whoops, I've got the number, which is why IntelliSense was like, what are you talking about, man? I don't know, man. I don't know what you're talking about. That's freaking me out. There we go. We'll stick with the number. So the reason I've wrapped it in that in that static function is because um, you can't set a number, like because the parameter it doesn't have a uh, a signature for um, for a for a decimal type or for a floating type or anything like that. So you have to wrap it in a function which. Uh, casts it to a uh, string and then returns that. Um, I haven't looked at the internals of number, but I'm pretty sure it uses um, 
I'm pretty sure it uses um, static cast. I'm not exactly sure. So, um, I'll go and have a look at that, and I'll tell you guys in the next video. But anyway, let's run this, and uh, we'll see what's going on. So hit save, hit compile, hit run. You can see the compiler is running nice and well. All this stuff going through, and we're going to hit start. And there you go. So now it's counting up. So pretty easy, pretty cool. That's it. That's Q timers. Um, there is another version of Q timers called Q time, um, or Q time, Q, like small Q timers. The difference between these and those is those are more lightweight and they do less and they're faster and all that stuff. And we'll get into those in another video. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Um, this is in collaboration with Kodi Made Easy. I'm speaking really fast because I want to get this video in a smaller file size so I can get this in HD. 1440p. Huge. Anyway, um, so check out Kodi Made Easy for C++ videos. Uh, check out these videos for QT Creator and QT videos. And stick around for the next video, which should be out by tomorrow. Cheers, guys.